on the Trail of Tears web quest is due uh, March 23rd. And for those of you who are curious, that's next Monday. So I didn't want everything due Friday. I wanted to stagger stuff out. So make sure you get your Trail of Tears web quest by March 23rd. There's a few questions that for some reason, I don't know if it's because of the COVID-19 crisis, but they were working before I signed it to you, uh, like question seven. Um, on the trail, there's some questions about that one that you just can't answer because for some reason the link's broken and it's broken on my end too. So we're just going to skip that question. Um, and you need to take your upcoming Manifest Destiny test by March 27th. And that is by Mexico. And all on to this, essentially what we're trying to do is buy Mexico, okay? So we said David Wilmot down there to buy Mexican land, okay? Um, and if you need to pause this at any point in time while you're taking notes, you can. So the Slidell mission, Mexican recognition of the Rio Grande River as the Texas-U.S. border, U.S. would forgive American citizens' claims against Mexican government, the U.S. would purchase New Mexico area for $5 million, and the U.S. would purchase California for any price. More than likely, if this didn't get out to the Mexican public, this would have actually happened. But because that um, it did get out and they were all there, the Mexicans were very upset that half their country is going to be sold, um, this the John Slidell was turned away. And again, you can see all the United States here. Oh, there's the Oregon country where you guys are going on your Oregon trail game. And you can see all this area right here is going to become, Me uh, that is Mexican territory is now going to become blue American territory. You can see how far down the battles went down here. I mean, this is, this is just wild, but some of these battles went really far down in Mexico, um, all the way down to their capital city, Mexico City. The war with Mexico. The U.S. declared war and attacked New Mexico, headed by General Stephen Kearney, and into California with John C. Fairmont. In 1847, John Winfield Scott, General Winfield Scott and General Zachary Taylor captured Mexico City, uh, pretty much forcing the Mexicans into submission. Reasons for the war with Mexico. The 1846 dispute over the boundary um, of Texas led to the U.S. war with Mexico. The U.S. believed the border was the Rio Grande. The Mexicans believed it was the Nuance River. Mexico would not sell the Mexican session to the U.S. from the Slidell mission, even though we offered 30 million bucks for it. And to further upset things, remember, we annexed Texas. Remember, we talked about the Alamo and all that fun stuff. So that kind of upset Mexico, too. So there's there's a lot of reasons for the war. And here's the Nuance River. And here's the Rio Grande. And you guys know the Rio Grande because we put that on just about every map I've assigned for you. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hildago, and these are not blood, this is wax stamps, okay? I love saying that. Treaty of Guadalupe Hildago. The treaty was basically forced on Mexico by President James Polk. Mexico gave up claims to Texas above the Rio Grande. Mexico gave the U.S. California, Mexico, Utah, Arizona, and parts of Colorado and Wyoming. The U.S. gave Mexico $15 million just so we're like, hey, we still like you guys, 15 million bucks, and also agreed to pay the claims of American citizens against Mexico. There were some lawsuits going on in the background. The results of the Mexican-American War. Big stuff here. You might need to know this for your manifest destiny test. The 17-month war cost $100 million in 13,000 American lives, mostly of disease, not from engagements with the enemy. It was pretty much not uncommon from back then. New territories were bought in the Union, which forced the explosive issue, which we talked about with the Missouri Compromise, of slavery to the center of national politics. So we have all this new land, essentially. And remember, the North and South, for like, you know, they, they want a, a slave state. Uh, the North wants a free state. And so because of this, it's going to expedite that. It's just like a, a match in a powder keg. It's going to explode. It bought, brought in 1 million square miles of land, including Texas. These new territories would upset the balance of power between the North and the South. Again, created two popular Whig generals who ran for president. Manifest destiny is partially realized. Okay. So you can see we got the Republic of Texas, then all this green area was ceded to the United States in 1848 for the Mexican-American War, which we just learned about. Now we're going to learn about this area called the Gadsden Purchase in 1853. The Gadsden Purchase in 1853, which you guys put on your map, was for choo choo. In 1853, the president was Milmerd Fillmore. The U.S. bought a strip of land for 10 million bucks. This area was flat as opposed to the Rocky Mountains was more conductive to building a railroad to the Pacific Ocean so that U.S. would stretch from sea to shining sea. So if we look back here, essentially there's this new technology, um, steam power, and we've harnessed it in this form of locomotives or uh, trains. And so as we were trying to connect our vast country with these trains, 
um, the Rockies, as you guys know, are right here. And it's almost impossible to go over these things at this point in time uh, with their engineering practices. So the easiest way to go was go around it. It was really tough to go around it up north. However, down here, there's a semi-flat piece of land called the Gatson Purchase is what we purchased from Mexico. So we buy some more land from Mexico, um, further um, solidifying our borders. So that way we can get our choo-choos all the way out to Sacramento and California. This right here is your territorial growth map. You remember the 13 colonies, the Treaty of 1783, the adams Almas Treaty, they got Florida, and the New Orleans Purchase, uh, Louisiana Purchase, excuse me the annexation of Texas from the Texas War. Now we have the Mexican Cession, 1848. Then the Gatson Purchase for 10 million bucks. We buy land for the Choo Choo's. And the last area, which is where you're going in the Oregon Trail game, is the Oregon Country in 1846, okay? Um, it is important to notice another driving, uh, huge deal here, another driving force to get people out west was a guy named John Marshall in 1849. He found, um, uh, gold at Sutter's Mill or Fort Sutter. This led to many types of people going to California with the hopes of striking it rich. Uh, people came from all over the world. We're talking Asia. We're talking all sorts of parts of Europe, even parts of Mexico. People were just coming up into the United States. Here's a picture of Sutter's Mill. And here's um, some um, like pictures of the Sierra Nevadas mountain range, which you guys know it, where that's at because your maps, a lot of where the gold's at. There's John Sutter. Californios. These are Spanish descendants living in the Mexican session, established Spanish missions and converted the, Catholic, the Native Americans to be Catholics. They set up Spanish settlements, brought new crops to the area, grapes, olives, citrus fruits, and raised longhorn cattle. Um, California has a very similar climate. It's called a Mediterranean climate, very similar to Italy, and that's why they can grow the same things that Italy has there. California Gold Rush in 1849. This is why we named the San Francisco NFL team, the 49ers, the 49ers. Um, people going out west um, were often called 49ers because that's when gold was discovered out there. Even if it was like in 1851, they were still called 49ers because that's when the gold was discovered. Chinese people. Chinese people um, came east from China to find gold. They were persecuted after a period of time because they were different. Um, and they helped to develop agriculture in California. They worked on railroads and they brought their culture to the west. And still to this day, if you go out west, there's a lot of road signs that are in Mandarin in their language. And there's a lot of Asian influence in the architecture out there um, because a lot of these people came over here in search of a better life. Most of them ended up working for the railroads, um, but some of them um, did other things as well, too, like spreading their culture. Mormons. Uh, Mormons are important to talk about, too. Their first leader was Joseph Smith. His mission was to lead his people away from the persecution that they were getting in New York. They were persecuted because their religion practices polygamy. Um, they do no longer do this anymore. Um, but polygamy was the idea of having multiple wives. Um, he was assassinated along the way. Brigham Young became the new leader. You may have heard of Brigham Young University. It's a big deal out there, out west. He led the group to Utah uh, on the Great Salt Lake, and he named his city Salt Lake City. He pioneered farming methods, built dams, canals, and irrigation ditches. His group was the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So maybe you've heard about these people. Oh, I'm going to go through these. Sorry. Uh, there we go. And our last stuff has to do with the Oregon Trail, okay? And you can see from these paintings that we talked about, uh, one of them already, that the West was extremely glorified. It looked, they made it look beautiful and interesting and and it was, and don't get me wrong, but it was also extremely dangerous. And as you guys were finding out in the Oregon Trail, death was quite um, something they met out west. Oregon fever, the Great Migration. So why did people go to Oregon instead of California where the gold was? Um, this begins in 1843. As many as 1,000 pioneers moved into Oregon Territory. In 1846, President James K. Polk settled the Oregon boundary dispute with Great Britain to make the northern border of the Oregon the 49th parallel. Uh, this was called the Oregon Treaty in 1846. Um, Russia is kind of in this area, too, and they gave up land claims in the Oregon country, and they ended up settling Alaska, which we eventually get again from the Russians, too. And you can see the Oregon country here, and there's claims by the United States, England, and Russia. 
Missionaries converted the Native Americans to Christians. They settled the country by establishing churches, brought disease. Unfortunately, they didn't know they were doing this to the Native Americans. They opened the West to settlements. Missionaries Marcus Whitman and his wife encouraged colonization and worked with the Native Americans. Narissa Whitman led, uh, wrote stories that encouraged women to travel from the U.S. to the Oregon country. In 1836, the trail they traveled was called the Oregon Trail, which you guys are experiencing right now. Pioneer women, a big deal here. They established the homesteads for husbands. They established schools, churches, hospitals, libraries, charities, and established right to vote in the West. These ladies were treated more equally than any other women in the United States at this time. They were seen as equals. Men finally saw women as equals because to get out West, everybody had to do their part for the family to survive. Okay. And so um, the men really recognized women um, from this role and they gave them the right to vote. About time, right? Again, this is your, um, you need to be aware of this. This is going to be on your test, okay, this uh, this slide. So you can screenshot this here or just come back to my video later. But uh, this is the territorial growth map that you guys did. We worked three days in class, and then I gave you the weekend. If it wasn't done, it was due this Monday. Remember that? Cool. I put the grades on power school. So you need to know all these treaties, okay, how we get Florida, how we get uh, out to the Mississippi River, Louisiana Purchase, et cetera, okay? And I think that is it for our note guide. That is correct. All right. So Greyhounds. Um, sorry, I was a little long winded there. But again, um, I think it was important. So we went over those notes if some people wanted them. OK, um, Greyhounds, I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, reach out to me via email. The next video lesson will be on Monday and um, I will be explaining. Um, and you can look ahead because I've already got a plan. I just don't have it posted. Uh, but we'll be talking about week two, okay? And so just be aware that today your manifest destiny paintings do. Uh, you need to get to the Oregon Trail by Wednesday. Um, you complete the web quest as well by Wednesday. Um, and you'll be doing something in chapter 13, okay? And there'll be an assignment through Google Forms. All right, Greyhounds, you're amazing. Wash your hands. Remember your social distancing and stay positive through all this. If you need anything, uh, reach out to me via email or remind. Greyhounds, you're amazing. And Mr. Little, signing off.